my name's Ian. I'm the veterinary surgeon working with the Aspinall Foundation's Gorilla Project in Congo. And this morning is a really special day because we're going to be releasing uh, four juvenile gorillas, all of whom were orphaned when they were much younger and their, their mothers were killed for the bushmeat trade or for, um, for, for various different reasons. Um, and so today what we're going to aim to do is to go and uh, anaesthetise them, um, take various samples, put them in the crates and then transport them to a release site within the, the reserve that the foundation uh, currently looks after uh, and, uh, and monitors. So uh, it's an exciting day for everyone involved. So this is not going to be easy at all. Uh, we have four gorillas uh, to anaesthetise this morning. Uh, Lakolo, Kengwe, uh, Epina and Lekito. Uh, three of them are around 50 kilos and one of them is uh, about 40 kilos, which is the size of, of large German Shepherd dogs. Uh, these gorillas are habituated to humans, but that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. Uh, they have extremely strong jaws, their, their strength is absolutely immense um, and so we have to be really careful and this is going to be more difficult than normal uh, because of the location that they're in at the moment. So I don't know how well you can see what I've got in my hand, but um, we're going to be attempting a, a sort of a new approach to actually try and get the gorillas uh, sedated to, uh, to the extent that we are actually able to hand inject them with a, with a drug, ketamine, in order to uh, actually anaesthetise them and make them safe to actually bring out, examine, put them in the crates uh, and so on. So the way we're going to do that, um, let's say it's, it's, a, it's a pretty novel technique. We're going to aim to anaesthetise all four gorillas at the same time, which is not an easy thing to do. And but we're going to try and do that by um, starting off with a little uh, concoction. In my hand, I have a little pot that has some honey and a sedative in it. Um, using the cotton bud that's in my hand, we're going to dip that into the, the medication and the honey and then slowly wipe it across the mucous membranes of the gorilla's mouth. They're used to coming up to the front um, of the, of the um, cage and, and taking oral uh, foods um, from hand. So we're hoping that we can keep them occupied and uh, rub this, this sedative um, onto the lips. And the idea is that that will slowly be uh, absorbed across the mucous membrane straight into the bloodstream and keep the gorillas or cause the gorillas to become fairly sedated. Uh, at that point we'll then be able to uh, do the same thing with a different drug, a stronger drug, um, ketamine, in order to uh, actually start the process of anaesthesia or at least get them heavily enough sedated that we can actually go in and hopefully inject them with ketamine to make sure that they are fully uh, anaesthetized. We started giving the 
oral medication, uh, the sedatives, about 15 minutes ago, and it's going really, really well. Uh, Epina, uh, the gorilla that we were sort of most concerned about, um, he got a mixture of, of two drugs, um, and he is already showing signs of of looking fairly heavily sedated, which is absolutely great. That's just what we wanted. The other three are also um, much quieter now, uh, and we're going to start um, giving them the, the second drug, the ketamine, again by the same route, rubbing it on the inside of their lower and upper lips, um, doing that really, really slowly, just so that it has time to, to be absorbed. And hopefully, it's, we, I'm really, really pleased. It's a, it's a little bit unexpected, um, just because it's such a novel technique, but um, at the moment, the four gorillas are doing absolutely great. They're, they're responding to the drugs exactly as we would have hoped uh, them to. So, so uh, we'll carry on and, uh, and we'll see what happens in the next stage. So we're about 30, 40 minutes uh, into the procedure and everything is going absolutely great, exactly as we hoped that it might do. Um, all four gorillas now are looking really sedated, um, droopy, their, their, eyes are, their eyes are closed um, and they're, they're moving very, very slowly, uh, if at all. And that's just how we want them. Um, there's been no stress whatsoever. We've kept really nice and quiet. Uh, we've done things slowly. Um, so I'm really hoping that we are not going to have to to use the blowpipe or the dart gun. Uh, the plan now is for Luke, uh, one of the Congolese staff who knows the gorillas really well, to actually enter the bedrooms and hand inject each of the gorillas with ketamine. Uh, that drug will then induce them into a, a deeper plane of anesthesia so that we can then safely uh, carry each of the gorillas out of the bedrooms individually, examine them, take blood samples and then move them into their crates uh, in order to be transported.
see uh, the picture of Et Pena qui arrive. Allez, 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 y passez, passez. Ok. Vous avez le... Ok, il euh, faut... Voilà, si on peut... Plusieurs personnes pour le porter. So the cage is... Uh, je sais. Yeah. C'est ok Attention, The four gorillas are in their crates and loaded onto the back of trucks. Uh, they've all had their reversals, so they're all awake now and we can hear them coughing. Um, they all look absolutely great. So these four juvenile gorillas are now going to head off into the Lafini Reserve and they'll be released into the wild for good. I'm here riding on the back of the truck with uh, two of the four gorillas that we are taking into the Lavini Reserve for release. And up ahead you can see Mathieu sitting on the back of the truck with two of the gorillas, uh, Lokolo the female and uh, Epena. I am sitting on the uh, I'm sitting on uh, Kito's uh, crate and making a lot of noise. Next to me is Kengwe. And the view is absolutely stunning. We've got about a two and a half hour road trip ahead of us, followed by about an hour and a half boat ride down the river, where we might come across hippos and crocodiles. And then, and then hopefully, there's, there's Lake Bleu right there in the distance, you can see. And uh, then the gorillas are going to put into place with their release spot and uh, they'll be released into the wild for good and add to the, uh, the, the population of Western Lowland Gorillas that's currently in the Lafini Reserve. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Oui. 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 Right. So, uh, 
hard to go now because we'll soon be at the river and we'll be able to start the next leg of our journey. I hope this video does it justice just how huge and vast and expansive this landscape is. It's absolutely spectacular. You can just see there's just miles and miles of savanna and grassland and then in the distance you can see uh, big pockets of gallery forest surrounding uh, different rivers and tributaries all of which link up so we're still about 20 minutes or so from the river hopefully once we get there we'll be able to unload the crates put them onto a boat and then yeah head to their release site Ahead of us now, so it's not too far. So we've arrived and we're just by the river now. I'm here with Frederick, who is the director of the project here in Congo, and Mattia, who is the field coordinator of the Aspinall Foundation's uh, sister project in Gabon. This is the river where the gorillas are going to be uh, loaded onto the boats in just a moment and headed to their release site. And directly opposite, we can see this is Sid, a silverback gorilla uh, who's been released into uh, onto an island. Of 23, uh, 23 hectares. 23 acres, apparently. Um, he had polio when he was younger, so uh, he's being kept on his own. He has to have a... a supplementary feed um, he has a very strange way of eating because he he's unable to use his uh, his jaw muscles uh, as he normally would and he has some problems with his mobility so as a result he's being kept on his own and just to my right as I speak um, the first of the gorillas is being carried down the bank ready to be put onto the boat <laughs> the gorillas are loaded and we're being watched by Sid in the background. And uh, we're, yeah, we're, we've got about an hour, hour and a half boat journey deep into the reserve and then we'll find our the release site for these gorillas. just driving along the river and you can see that we've got a hippo joining us just gone under the water Bonga, 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 bonga
This is Epina, um, one of the males in the group who's, who's destroyed his crate a little bit during the journey. Um, but he's doing great and we're in position. So this is what it's all about. We've arrived at the, uh, at the release site and we have one more gorilla to get off the boat. Um, all four of these gorillas were orphaned as, as babies um, when their mothers were killed for bushmeat or for, uh, for other reasons by local people. Um, and now they're six or seven years old. They've been looked after uh, by the Aspinall Foundation um, and the project in Congo. And now they're, they're ready for release. We've, we've brought them here by truck, by uh, boat, and now they're ready to be released. So this is, what, this is what the Aspinall Foundation is all about. These are now wild gorillas. Okay, we're ready. Are you wait. And there we go, we've got four, four more wild gorillas in the reserve. Epina, the, the male, has, has run off to the left. Um, he's probably the most aggressive of the group, so we just have to see if he comes back. <laughs> But there we go. Yeah. So these guys are completely wild now, but because we've just let them go, we're just giving them a little bit of food just to make sure that they're nice and comfortable um, with our presence before we leave them. But then after today, that's it for them. They're, they'll be left to it. They can join the other uh, 20 gorillas that are already in the reserve. And hopefully, in time, they'll be able to start their own families and help build this sustainable population of gorillas within the Lafini Reserve. It's an absolutely fantastic day. And we've got all four gorillas now just in front of us. Oui. It's, a, it's a great sight. We're just getting back into camp now. Uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. We've released those four gorillas back into the wild, or into the wild for the first time since they were orphaned. And uh, it's an absolutely amazing thing to be a part of. It's, I'm hot, hungry and thirsty, but it feels absolutely brilliant. So we'll leave it there and open a beer. We're just um, going to head off in a moment to see Sid, uh, the uh, silverback gorilla who is living on the island behind me. Uh, he had polio when he was much younger. And so because of that, he has real problems uh, eating uh, wild vegetation and he also has problems with his movement. So because of that, he, he gets um, a load of supplementary food twice a day and he, he lives on his own on a, on a large sort of 23 acre island. 
Um, and in front of me, we have some wild asparagus. Uh, Mattia is an expert on the local vegetation, and he assures me that this is uh, part of wild banana um, plants. And we have papayas and mango and all sorts of other things in there. So we're going to go and see if we can find Sid, have a look at him, uh, see what sort of body condition he's in, and um, and yeah, get a better assessment. So we're just going over to see Sid on his island. He's 26 years old and uh, you can see that he's sitting on a feeding platform at the moment. And the first thing that's obvious is that he doesn't eat in a normal fashion. He has to use his right hand to help sort of push up his lower jaw. This is all a result of uh, the polio that he suffered when he was much younger. And yeah, he's... He's not the most attractive gorilla, um, but unfortunately he did suffer pretty um, serious illness when he was younger, um, which has left him a little bit disfigured. So it's pretty obvious that Sid is uh, he's very thin. Um, he's also got a little bit of nasal discharge there. Uh, but this is all a result of that illness when he was younger. He's just not able to eat the uh, natural vegetation on the island very easily, which is why we're having to support him. And uh, based on what we've seen today, we'll have to increase the ration a little bit. But he seems to be holding his own, but um, unfortunately he's, he's never going to be a magnificent silverback.